What I'm going to start by doing is choosing the dictionary page that's going to become my first page of the book. I'm just going to be looking for one that has some images that kind of appeal to my eye. And I think I'm going to start with these two guys right here. I'm going to move these pages aside, and I'm going to put the covers aside for later, and just take one sheet of the thinner watercolor paper. I'm going to grab a brush. What I do is I use um, these cheap and expensive bristle brushes. I, I really like them. They're easy to use. And also, when you're painting, they apply a lot of texture into the paint and the matte medium. And I'm going to dig right into the bottle, and I'm going to take it right from there. First thing I'm going to do is apply it to the substrate. Now, you're going to have to determine how much to apply. You don't want to make it too thick, so it's globby, but you also don't want to make it too thin. And what's very important is that you make sure that you cover every inch of the page. When you leave off glue, what happens is the paper starts to buckle and bubble. And when that happens, you're left with pages that just don't look as good as they could. You'll also notice that as I'm adding the matte medium, that this paper is starting to curl. That's just the nature of the paper. You don't have to worry about it. After it dries and we do the other side, it'll flatten out. The second step is that we're going to apply matte medium to the vintage book pages. But we're going to be doing it to the opposite side that we want to show. So again, I'm going to dig in here. And much like I did with the watercolor paper, I'm going to make sure that I cover every inch of this. As I said before, these pages are quite brittle. And sometimes you're going to find that as you add glue and your fingers stick, or as you glue it actually to the page, that there's going to be some tears and rips. You do not have to worry about that at all. And what I found, in fact, is that that actually gives the paper much more character, much more texture. It just makes your project look that much better. Once you've applied the glue to both pages, you're going to flip the page over and attach it to the watercolor paper. Now, this sometimes gets a little tricky because the glue is obviously very sticky. But you're just going to do the best that you can. And if the pages are a little wonky, that's totally OK. You might notice that there's some bubbling here already. And what I'm going to do is use a bone folder to pull that bubbling out. You could also use your fingers if you like. I'm going to start in the center, and I'm going to work my way outwards. And as you can see, there's going to be a lot of excess glue that's coming out. You can also see these tears. Again, do not worry about that. This is going to look amazing when you're going to be doing your border later. Work out from the middle to the edge. And when I told you before about trying to figure out the best amount of glue to use, you'll see what happens if you use too much. If you notice that there's some pieces that are not sticking, just take your brush and add just a little bit more and then press it down. Once you feel that it's flattened out enough, you're going to be adding one more layer of matte medium to the top. You want to make sure you add enough that it's going to saturate the page. And Once again, just be careful that you cover it all. OK, now that you have all your pages ready, we're going to start the fun part. We're going to paint, and we're going to create some texture. So the first thing you're going to do is choose a page to use and to start. And what you're going to do is you're going to choose that page based on an image that you might want to mask out. And I see right on the top here is this bird. I think this is a pretty cool image. And I like the fact that this page has already got a good distressed look to it. So I'm going to take these pages and put them aside. And I'm going to begin to work on this page. The first step we're going to do is we're going to be adding our post-it paper as a way to mask the image. Now, there are many fancy products out there that you can use to mask, but I like to use low-tech products whenever I can. And I found that a post-it note is perfect for what I'm going to be doing. There's a sticky part to it, and I'm going to make sure that that sticky part covers the image that I want to save to show when I'm done painting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my scissors and my pen, and I'm just going to place the post-it over the piece of the image that I want to mask off. You don't have to be too precise here, but I am going to mark it with a pen just to make sure that all I have shown is the image. And I'm just going to cut it out, making sure the sticky side is on the bottom. 
And then I'm going to place this over the image. Now there's another image on the page, and that might actually show through a little bit, but that's going to be great. You'll notice that the images on these pages are quite small. That's because it's this dictionary. But if you're using a page that has a larger image, you'll notice that there's only a small surface that's gluey on the back of a post-it. What you can do is you can get a glue stick, and you can add it to the rest of the page, and then you'll be able to mask out images as large as you need. Again, low tech and something we all have around the house. Once you've masked out an image or more images, then what you're going to be doing is starting to paint. And the first layer is going to be our fluid acrylics. You can put these on any way you like. You can choose your favorite colors. You can put them on in blocks. You can put them on just in a mashup of colors. I particularly like to put it on by having one color frame the page and have one color in the center. I'm all about framing, and we'll do more of that later. So I'm going to choose for this page, uh, for, the, for the edges, uh, a burnt orange color, which I think is really bright and vibrant and rich. I'm going to just pour a little bit out onto my palette paper, and then I'm going to grab a brush. I'm going to choose this brush because it's just about the size of the edge that I want to make on the paper with this color. I'm going to make sure I get my paint into the brush bristles, and then I'm just going to throw it on the page. One of the great things about this project is that you do not have to be too careful. You do not have to be too precise. So I just want to make sure that most of the edging is covered in this color. I don't mind if it goes in the middle a little bit more here. I don't mind if some plain paper is showing through it. And I think it's actually kind of cool that the image we're masked off is going to have one color on one side and the next color on the other. Anytime you can add a layer, either on purpose or by accident, you're one step ahead of making a beautiful page. So I'm going to cover this. I'm going to make sure I cover the mask. I don't have to worry if some of the gold gets on the other color. I didn't really have to worry about the edge drying before I started this segment because in some cases, the messier, the better. I'm just going to spread it out. And I like the way that looks. And I know that some of that iridescent gold is going to show through in the end. What I find is my problem is I want to splatter a little too much. And that's not always good. So I'm going to leave it at that. Um, now, what I'd, wa what I'd probably do is go and add another color of splatter to this page, which will bring out some of the other colors that I've used as well. But for now, I'm going to move on, and I'm going to show you another very simple way to add some finishing touches to your pages. And that way is through mark making. Anybody can take a pen and make a mark. So you do not in any way, shape, or form have to be hesitant to do this. What I'm going to do is just use a whole series of pens, different types of pens with different color inks, and I'm going to start marking the page. What I'm going to do is pick a page, and I'm going to take this one. And I'm going to look for areas in the page that I feel are a little bit blank. Now do remember, I can't put anything up here because it's not going to show after it's bound. I don't want to put anything right here because that's the area I'm leaving for my journaling to do later. But what I'm noticing is that there's a little gap here, and maybe a little gap here. Now I might fill that in with another rubber stamp or, or a rub-on, but given that I haven't, I'm going to take advantage and I'm going to get a color and I'm going to just start making marks. And when I say marks, I just mean marks. These are just little kind of stars. Maybe what I'll do is make a few lines. I might make some X's. I might make some circles. And again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take other color pens. I'm going to try to find some other colors that are in here and pull them out through these other color pens. And over time, I'm going to create some really interesting effects and really interesting patterns. You know, as I said, there's some sections over here that maybe seem a little bit blank to me. So I'm going to use this blue. I'm going to use the thin tip of the Tombow pen that we talked about before. And maybe what I'll do is just make some X's. And now I'm going to make them just a little bit bigger. And I'm going to overlap them. I'm going to have them integrate into the transfer that I made earlier. And then what I might do is I might take another color 
and I might start filling in these little areas 